Hey, it's Dougie Wood, and in this video, I'm going to answer the age-old question of what are SharePoint Web Parts? SharePoint Web Parts are modular components that allow users to customize and enhance the functionality of SharePoint pages within their intranet. These web parts are essentially building blocks that can be added to a SharePoint page to display a multitude of content. They play a crucial role in building an intranet by providing a flexible and customizable framework for creating dynamic and feature rich pages. You can see this page is made up of multiple different web parts, including this news web part, which is currently being displayed as a slideshow to allow people to flick through. We've got a useful links web part on the right hand side, um, which is essentially showing quick links for people to click to bounce into key areas. We've got call to action web parts. So these are three independent web parts which have been put into three separate sections on the page. Again, we've got another news web part, but instead of showing as a slideshow like we do at the top of the page, instead it's being showed as tiles. We've got an events web part, which has been shown as large cards, but we can also get them to show as small tiles as well if we wanted to. Again, we can embed things like weather or world clocks, countdown timers, and other really useful bits of functionality using SharePoint web parts. So what are the key points about SharePoint web parts and what role do they play in building an intranet? The first is modularity. Web parts are designed to be modules, self-contained units that can easily be added, removed, dragged and dropped and rearranged onto a SharePoint page. You can do this really easily by clicking on the edit button to put yourself into the edit mode of the SharePoint page. So now when we hover over, we can see all the different web parts which are made up on this page. So I said, call to action web part, news web part, weather web part, and it's really easy to manipulate them. In terms of dragging and dropping, we can see whenever we hover over and see this little cross made up of arrows pointing away from each other, it means we can drag them and pull them around into different areas. Now, all of the web parts in SharePoint are 100% responsive, meaning they'll take up the full width of the area or what we refer to as the section of the page. So once I've dragged it onto the left, you can see that this is now filling that space and it's putting these three world uh, weather kind of sort of web parts fully width into the page. Whereas if I drag it back into a narrower area, it then stacks on top of itself because it's fully responsive. Web parts are often used to display various types of content. Um, it doesn't just have to be what we can see here. We can also display do uh, documents, lists of content, calendars, news, and so much more. For example, the document library web part can be used to add to a page to display a list of the documents stored on that current site. Or we can use something like a dynamic uh, content roll-up to pull out documents from other areas of the internet. To add a web part to a page is really simple. Anywhere that you can see whilst you're in edit mode, that little cross appearing means you can add a new web part to that particular section. Now you can use the sections which come with the internet page already, or you can add in your own sections. To add in a new section, all we need to do is click on this little plus button on the left hand side where it says add section. And you can see there's a whole host of different types of layouts and sections that we can use. The sections we can use sort of standard are one column, meaning it's a full width kind of column. We've got two columns, which gives us that kind of two column split. Uh, three columns, one third left, which means that it's slightly smaller on the left than it is on the right, or one third right, which means that you've got a much bigger space on the left than you do on the right hand side. Or we can use templates. Now by using templates, Microsoft give you a bit of an idea about how you can structure your content to make your pages look a bit different. So for example, we could use this three column image and text, which basically will give us not only the section, but also web parts pre-inserted into that section. So for example, we could populate this with some imagery and some text, and then that section is already complete and ready to go. We can remove sections by just clicking the delete section on the left hand side, by selecting it, click on delete, select it, click on delete, and then we can remove any sections that we don't want to use. So now we've actually added our section, let's look at how we add in our web parts. Again, I was saying, we can click on this little plus button anywhere that we want to add in a new web part. But of course we can always drag and drop it and move it around afterwards if we wanted to, like we've previously just seen. 
By clicking on the plus, we see the full list of the web parts we have access to, but it will categorize them. And the first category is frequently used. So these are frequently used web parts by people. So that's why they're pushed to the very top of, the, uh, of this box. So it's nice and easy to actually find them and use them. Very commonly, we use a text web part. So we add in a little bit of text. So this is some text. And it has a lot of the same features as like Microsoft Word does in the fact that we can customize the font um, by the default selections that we've got. We can change the text size as well as the colors, make bullet point lists, um, make things hyperlinked and so on. We can do all of that using this control panel across the top. So let's look at some of the other web parts. We've also got news. So we're looking at news above. So news, as I say, we could pull out news from all of the internet or just this specific site. Now to configure options of a web part, you'll see there's a little kind of pencil icon next to the web part once you've added it to a page. By clicking on that, you'll see the full panel of options appear on the right hand side. Now every web part will have configurational options, but what you can configure will be different depending on the web part and the functionality of that web part. So on the right hand side, you can see I've got a couple of different options here under layout. So I've got the top story layout. So it makes a much larger tile on the left hand side with three of the uh, news items on the right hand side. So also worth noting, once you've got a layout that you've got more content than what will fit in that layout. So if, say for example, I can only show four items in here, but I've clearly got more than that in total. That's when the see all option will appear on the right hand side. And that link will take you to a page in which you'll see the full list of all the news. So once you've got more news than what will fit on the page, that see all option will appear. Cool. What other options have we got? So we can also go for a list option. We go by side by side, hub news, or carousel like we saw earlier, or even a tiles option to so make it look like a hero um, bar. We can also choose how many posts we want to show. So we can choose to say, I want to show five in this case, or maybe I only want to show two. We can apply some, we can also apply some basic filters. So the title must include certain words. When was it recently added? Who was it created by? Or if you want to go really advanced, you can use manage properties, and that's where you can add your own list of tags um, in, in there. You can apply audience targeting as well. So on previous videos, I've talked about the ability to show and hide content based on who is actually viewing it. So say, for example, if this is news items, it might be that you want to audience target them. So people in certain countries, business units or departments will see different news articles depending on which group they are a member of. You can also choose to organize the news and drag and drop them into different orders as well if you wanted to. As I say, every web part will have this ability to edit the web part properties, but the options will be different depending on the different web part. You can also choose to duplicate the web part if you wanted to have multiple, and you can choose to remove it by clicking on the little rubbish can next to it. Now, there is a whole host of different web parts in here. Um, we can add in images and we can add in buttons. But before we go into any more of those different options, I'm just gonna pause for a second as I just want to ask a quick favor. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe to my channel. If you would like to slingshot your knowledge and learning of SharePoint, then I also offer some membership only training videos. Now my membership is only 99p a month, so it's not gonna break the bank. You can see I've already got over 100 paid members on my channel, and you can see the membership options by clicking on members membership on my channel. You can see there's actually multiple members only videos, including an advanced training, which starts off with talking about SharePoint document libraries, advanced features of document libraries, um, navigation inside of intranets, as well as content around best practices and building engaging SharePoint intranet content. Once you've watched that, you could also then start the how to build a SharePoint intranet series. And there's a three part video, which will go into building an intranet homepage, designing a modern SharePoint intranet, as well as building out SharePoint sites for departments. I also have a members only Q and A section, which provides a priority um, response for myself, related to any questions that you have related to SharePoint or my videos as well as I often poll my members to find out what 
training that they would like to see next. So more training calls around Power Automate and SharePoint for internet managers has been requested. So please do consider the membership options around my channel. And if you've got any questions at all, please let me know. So let's get back to the video. So as we've seen, SharePoint web parts can be customized to meet specific design and functionality requirements. Users can adjust settings, styles, and configurations to tailor the appearance and behavior of each of the individual web parts. Web parts can include interactive elements that enable users to interact with and manipulate content directly on the page. This can include filters, sorting options, and other interactive features that enhance the user experience. You can also integrate, SharePoint web parts can integrate other um, features and products like Stream, um, YouTube, Twitter, Yammer, all these different things directly into your SharePoint intranet. It also promotes collaboration. Web parts facilitate collaboration by enabling users to share and collaborate on content directly within the context of a SharePoint page. Um, you can also trigger things like workflows or embed um, Power Automate or Power Apps directly into SharePoint using native functionality. And as I say, SharePoint web parts are designed to be fully responsive, ensuring that intranet pages are accessible and usable across different devices and screen sizes. There's a whole host of different web parts in here that I suggest you go through and take a little look through in your own time to play around and understand how they work and what you can use them for. You can use things like buttons, which is just a single button on a page, or you could use a call to action, which provides you a background image and a title along with your button. There's a whole host of things like quick links, YouTube embeds, links. It's also worth checking out like things like the spacer, which is essentially if you wanted to provide a bit of space um, on your page, you can use this just to sort of fill out a little bit of space to pad out and maybe move the sections of the web parts around a little bit. Um, ba -ba so what other web parts we got? We've got document libraries, so we can add in documents. We've got highlighted content for rolling up content from multiple areas of our intranet. Page properties, if you wanted to show, for example, who the page owner was, any recent documents that the user that's currently looking at the site is looking at, Twitter embeds for feeds, countdown timers and events, um, group calendars and organizational charts and things like that to promote things which are coming up, events and people around the organization. We've got data analysis as well. So we can embed Microsoft Forms, Power BI, or even quick charts directly into our page, as well as regional information like Bing Maps, weather, or world clocks. There's a whole host of different types of web parts you can embed directly into SharePoint. So I would suggest you go in and have a little play around, add them to a page, uh, and just see what you think. It's probably better to have a little sandbox area to have a little play around with. Um, and if you've got any questions at all, if you get stuck, then use the comments feed below to let me know. Thank you very much for watching this video.